Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to go over making this little effect for a search box on a website. So I was looking over at um, Apple's website, and they got this little search box up here that's kind of dark. But when you click on it, it goes white and expands a bit. Now, that's kind of neat. Click away. Oops, I clicked in the wrong spot. But when you click on it, as opposed to clicking on something else, it goes back and forth. And it's not too tough to make now. Um, I didn't really diagnose their code to see what they're doing. They could be doing some JavaScript stuff, but I'll just show you a quick little CSS technique for making something very similar to that effect. So what I've got going, in fact, I've already got a kind of a web page started up. Go back to that browser here. And I've got a little form set up here. So I've got a form with a field set, and I've just got an input in this. I was using this before for our first name text box, but we can call this a search search not too critical for our purposes and I do have a few basic things but some of these aren't critical either so I don't not using a label don't need the legend I'll keep that field set on there for now okay so basically I have this basic form with a little text box you know and I'd like to be able to jazz it up like Apple does on their website so it'll just take a couple CSS rules I'm going to go ahead and work on my input. Now, since you're in reality, you, you would have multiple inputs, it would be best to refer to this by its specific ID. This is my search input. I don't want to confuse it with other inputs out there. So I'll do search input pound sign search, or you could just do pound sign search. But I'm going to be very descriptive, so input search. And first I'll work on the default state of it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set the font size, make it nice and large margin left. Nah, I don't really need any of that yet. So let's see. How about I'll set the width though. The width I'll start off at 140 pixels and the height I'll make it 30 pixels. Um, we need uh, some border radius because on Apple they have those nice curvy borders. I'm going to do 20 pixels. That might be a little steep there. How about 15 pixels? We can do a little trial and error with that border radius and I am going to use a background image now just before I started recording I went and found a background image so I'm going to use my magnifying glass.png now this background image if I go back to Apple site real quick you see it's um, oops that's where I got mine over an icon site and uh, basically it's a really tiny little icon uh, right there on the left side of their text box so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this as a background image on the literal text box. So I need to set the size. And I found that 23 pixels looked pretty good with my 30 pixel high box when I was testing it out before. I'm going to choose background repeat. No repeat. Don't want to do that. And background position. I'm going to go ahead and put this four pixels from the left and three pixels from the top. Okay, let's go ahead and stop there for a second. I'm going to save this and uh, head back over to my browser. Let's check this out. Refresh. Yeah, things are coming along. So there's my little image. And if I click on this, I can type. But um, you see my text kind of goes on top of that background image. So in order to solve that, we just put a little padding left and uh, let's see, I'm going to pick about 35 pixels here. Now check this out. By putting that padding left on there and refresh, now when I go to type, the text is 35 pixels away from the edge of the input, which is more than enough to clear the little background image magnifying glass. So there we go. All right, and I, of course on Apple's, they start off, I keep going the wrong site, there we go. Apple, they start off kind of dark, so I'm going to change my color here too. Background color, I'll do a, a dark gray. How's that look? There we go, got kind of a dark gray color. Excellent. I think we're pretty much there. Now we just need to take care of it when somebody activates or focuses on this particular text box. And I'm going to make a couple changes to this. Let's see. I'm going to head down to input search colon focus. Okay, So when somebody focuses on the search box, that means putting their cursor on it, I want to change a couple things. 
I want to lighten up the background color to, I'll go to off-white, that's a very, very light gray. I'll change the width, make it uh, wider, and let's see, I think that's pretty good. Let's see how that looks. Refresh, so now when I click, it gets wider. There we go. Now you'll notice that yellow outline there. That's actually something that uh, Chrome is doing, and we can turn that off. It looks like a border, but it's really called an outline. I'll just do an outline of 0px there. So now when I refresh and click, I don't get that. So that's looking pretty good. Obviously, you can spend a little time fine-tuning this, but I would like to slow that action down because on Apple, when you click, it's, it's not instantaneous. So what I want to do here is do a little transition effect. And my transition is actually going to go up in my original rule for the input box. Not on the focus, but up here. And since I'm testing out on Chrome, I'm going to use the WebKit browser prefix. WebKit transition. I'm going to change all effects, which means color and width. I'm going to do this over 300 milliseconds, which seemed like a pretty good timing when I tested it earlier. And the style of transition is going to be ease in out, which I tend to prefer. Ease in out means it starts slow, gets faster, finishes slow. And of course this is all happening over a third of a second, so it's, it's pretty fast. Um, so, but just putting that WebKit transition in, now when I jump over here and refresh and click, now we get the effect. Click away, and there we go. So that's kind of the effect that I'll go for. Now there's a couple things we can tell that uh, Apple is doing that I'm not doing in this particular video. For one, I can see a little bit of thin borders. So they might be doing a little bit of box shadow um, in here. And you can do some negative box shadows to kind of get that line in. And uh, it also looks like when it's gray, they've got a little gradient on there. And you can do CSS gradients. See how the top half is a lighter gray, and then we have a darker gray at the bottom. So go ahead and play around with that. But uh, in a, for a quick pinch, that's not bad. And you can use these transition effects for, um, for other browsers, too. You can put in Moz, M-O-Z, for the Moz version transition. And for some reason, if it doesn't work in an older browser, it's going to be an instantaneous action. So have fun with that one.